firki.co and you will be directed to the firki website to register on firki fill in a brief registration form you can also sign in through your google account you will have to use your email id in order to create an account on our website this account is again free to create and use once you create your account and log in with your credentials you will be directed to the dashboard the dashboard would have notifications related to your profile course progress time spent and your firki discussion groups to access different pedagogical courses you can click on the courses link on the top left of the screen the courses page allows you to choose courses based on difficulty level and category the courses are also available in different regional languages feel free to browse the different courses we have in our catalog using the search bar above each firki course is designed using the fits model that stands for fee imagine do and share the fee section of the course helps you identify your current practices the imagine section defines the practices that one should follow to improve teaching and learning outcomes a detailed description of strategies are highlighted under the do section that one can implement in the classroom and with their students at last the share section talks about ways in which one can share their learnings with each other each course has also a set of reflection questions as part of the assessment section along with the course material each firki course also contains a learning circle plan and journal pages a learning circle plan helps the coaches and mentors conducting the offline learning circles to discuss and share learnings from the course a journal page summarizes the course with important points we are adding new courses every month so keep watching this page next up we have the webinars page that is also accessible from the top left of the screen on this page you will find information about the upcoming webinars if you scroll down you will find a bunch of resources from our older webinars these resources will include video recordings of the webinar itself notes from the webinar the presentation used by our speaker and other resources on the topic covered do feel free to browse this section at your leisure the final page to look out for is the resources page also to be found at the top left corner of your screen this page houses and will house resources from several of our partner organizations such as the british council khan academy story weaver pratham books and more we are in the process of adding to the list and you can easily filter resources by partners grades or standard and the subject of instruction we hope you find value in using these resources in your practice as teachers and educators finally you can find the firki app on the play store and can access these courses resources and webinars through your phone so download our app and stay connected to teaching and learning on the go Thank you, Bala Miss, for that. I hope the video helped everyone in knowing more about Fitki. If you have questions around any of the features highlighted in the video, please write to us at contactfirki at teachforindia.org. With that, let's move on to the webinar at hand today. Thank you for taking the time to join us in this discussion. In designing this and other webinars throughout the year, Fitki team is hoping that we can disseminate meaningful knowledge and skill. they can take us closer to a goal of improving the quality of education in indian classrooms this webinar specifically will be focusing on how we can help our learners feel confident in speaking up and using their english be it in a physical or online classroom we look at the importance of creating the right environment providing support and giving constructive feedback so let me now introduce our speakers for today we have anvesha who is the head of research monitoring and evaluation with british council She has around 15 years of experience in this field and has worked on several projects on different developmental issues. She has masters in economics from Jawaharlal Nehru University and economics honors from Delhi University. She has experience of working in both rural and urban contexts. She likes numbers but enjoys doing qualitative research more. Anvesha is an active volunteer with NGOs working on children issues especially around education. Welcome Anvesha. We also have Kamini. Kamini is an academic manager based in West India and has worked for the British Council for more than fifteen years. Kamini has extensive teaching and training experience and has worked in India and overseas. She has experience of working on a number of large-scale government projects in schools 
higher education and conflict affected areas to build resilience and in the b2b sector kamini has gained a number of qualifications including the cambridge diploma in teaching english to speakers of other languages masters in leadership and management from open university uk and cambridge certificate in teaching english to speakers of other languages she has also done the e moderating certificate course from the british council and is a celta tutor she has presented at many conferences including tech 17 visakhapatnam tech 15 hyderabad nile test sol 2014 egypt etl 2013 lebanon and delivered a number of webinars to internal and external audiences welcome again kamini to this webinar hi uh, thank you thank you so much nice that to see you again <laughs> nice to see you <laughs> that brings us to the norms for the webinar today so given the large audience that we're expecting today and requesting all the participants here to keep your video and mic off to reduce stress on bandwidth so you can keep a pen and pencil at handy so you can keep take notes so that you can deepen the learning from this webinar also type any questions that you have in the chat box i'll be curating all of them and asking those to our presenters here today at the end of this webinar this will be recorded and will be available on youtube and the fiki website very soon so that brings me to the end of my introduction before we go ahead with the webinar at hand today we're going to do a quick opening activity for that what we're going to do is when i say go all of us will unmute our mic and we'll say hello in our mother tongue so it can be namaste or namaskar it can be anything in your mother tongue say hello when i say go okay so ready 1 2 3 go namaskar namaskar assalamu alaikum namaskar perfect thank you so much everyone thank you understand the diversity in this group uh, this brings me to the end of my introduction over to our speakers now over to kamini and anvisha all right um thanks everyone i'm kamini and uh, thanks for the introduction eli um so i'm here with uh, anvisha my colleague both of us work at the british council in different offices i'm based in mumbai and anvisha is based in delhi and i can say safely say that for the both of us um we are very delighted to be here and we would like to thank you for taking the time to attend the session and we really really hope you find the session really useful you after the session you take away some practical ideas that you can straight away apply in your context in your classroom with your learners i'd also like to thank all the participants who responded to the pre session survey it was it really gave us a glimpse into what you are thinking about on the topic the topic which we are going to talk about today in the context of action research and we'll discuss the your response in a little more detail in the session there'll be times where when we will ask you to respond in the chat there'll be times when we'll ask you to unmute your mic and speak so eli please uh, when we give you the prompt that please unmute people's mics uh, i think uh, somebody from the team will have to do that because we would like people to share their views not only via chat but also they, we'd like them to speak uh, how, however it happens that a lot of people sometimes speak at the same time so please maintain decorum and if you feel that somebody else spoke before you let them finish and make sure that there's one person speaking at one time and you know everybody can then hear okay so let me um uh, take you through the session outcomes the session today is on effective teaching and learning with action research so by the end of the session we will have uh, you will have uh, reviewed what the key stakeholders in a school want after that uh, we'll talk a bit about teachers objectives and i'm sure all of you are very very familiar with those better than us uh, there'll be a chance where you present your opinion on the changing teaching context circumstance in schools um then you'll all contribute to uh, anvesha go slow please then you'll contribute to uh, data collection um where we make a choice between two different types of teaching models uh, one is face to face and the other is online teaching and after that we'll analyze uh, the tools we've used and what are the, i mean what are the different kinds of tools what can they be used for can they be used for um, you know uh, presenting evidence 
Um, so then um, uh, after that, there'll be some time for reflection. We will look at if these tools, can you use them with your students? Can they, uh, you know, are they useful? And at the end, we'll discuss some benefits of low resource action research. So these, these are our session outcomes. They may, may seem a lot to you, but believe me, um, uh, you will enjoy the session when I say that. So let me take you to how the session will work. Let's give you an overview, simplify it after the lesson, sorry, the session outcomes. So first, uh, we will uh, introduce the topic to you. After that, we will review teachers' objectives. Then you'll have a chance to present your opinion. You'll after that contribute to data collection. Once we've done that, we look at some early trends that are coming out from these, uh, the discussion we've had, the data collection uh, that we've done. What are the trends that are emerging? We'll then reflect on the tools and their use. We'll after that uh, 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 look at the benefits of action research. And at the end, we'll open the floor for um, q and some q and So please keep your questions ready and we'll certainly answer them as in what, what as in whatever comes up during the session. If we can, we will. Otherwise, we'll have some time at the end where we'll be, we'll be answering your questions. So don't worry about that. All right. Taking it a step further. So key stakeholders in a school, in our opinion, are teachers, students, and parents. Are there any other key stakeholders? If have we missed anything? Can you put it in the chat, please? Anyone? Are there any other key stakeholders? The principal, yeah. So maybe, yes, I kind of thought about it. The school management. So the principal and the trustees and all of those people, sure. I, I'm not too sure, Nirmala, what do you mean by NGO? NGO and school, do they work together? Government agencies, yes. So that's right. Yes, program managers, people who lead on the ground doing all the hard work of operations and student enrollment and registration and support stuff maybe. Okay, um, all right. Okay, so NGOs who have a partnership with schools for projects, sure. So what do they want? What do all of them want? What do, what do the teachers want, students want, parents want? I think all of them have a common goal. Um, can anybody tell me what that common goal can be? In the chat, please. Student outcomes is one. Okay, Abhine, thank you. Any, any other ideas? Student learning, excellent education, student welfare and learning. Yes. So I can put it in a nutshell for you and you can agree or disagree with me. So they want uh, quality teaching and learning in the classroom. Do you all agree with me? Yes, no, in the chat box, please. Yes. So everybody wants quality teaching and learning. And if the teaching is quality is high quality, your learning outcomes are better. Your student achievement is better. Student participation is better, everything. So I, I think I can safely say that everybody wants quality teaching and learning in the classroom. But how do we assess that? How can we assess that? So again, in the chat box, if you can tell me, how do we assess the teaching and learning in a school? How do we do that? Okay, assessments when you say, uh, 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 I can't see the name, I'm sorry. Pratye, yes, when you say teacher reflection and assessment, yes, but assessments means term exams, semester exams, but then I think with, I think Anvesha can say a bit more a little later about it, but yes. So assessment, I mean, when we have unit tests, term tests, semester tests, you know, we get a number 
and we look at the class result with the marks that the students have got. Of course, we focus on informal or formative assessments as well, as Amrita says, FA and SA, yes. So, yeah, so that's one way of doing it. And most times teachers rely on that. The school principal will look at the result in the end of the whole school and say, all right, what has been the pass rate? How many students have failed? But I am sure you'll agree there is, it is a lot more than that, than just marks in the school. So we, this is what we are going to talk about today will give us maybe a bit more insight into what else we can do. Um, okay. And what can you do? What can you do? So you said reflection, assessments are part of the school. What can you do to assess quality teaching and learning besides reflection? In the chat box, please. Okay, have a goal, have an objective. Rohan says set a vision. So maybe, uh, uh, you know, uh, create a personalized learning pathway. Sure, but your does your personalized learning pathway benefit the students and ultimately the school? Or is it just your own pathway to go up the career ladder? Uh, observations, various activities. Yes, setting goals and reflecting on that. Pratye. Malakar says, yeah, okay. So let's let's find, let's look at all this in a particular context. So let's first just review um, what are teachers' objectives. Over to you, Anvesha. Um, Anvesha? Yes, I was unable to unmute myself and switch on the camera, so I was struggling with that. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm still not able to uh, share my camera, now I can. Okay, so we'll have to make the presentation full screen. Yes, I'm doing that. Yeah. Sorry, um, I'm using two screens because of, um, uh, you know. Never mind, let's, let's, let's go on, let's go on, let's go on. <laughs> and so you will notice that I'm working on, I'm looking different direction from the camera, but um, I'm talking to you all. So going forward in the chat, continuing with the discussion that Kamini started, can you list some of the objectives for yourself as you are in the classroom in the school? I am trying to get in the chat. Uh, Kamini, if you notice. I'll I, 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 I look at the chat, don't worry. Okay, uh, so the question is, the question is that what are some of the teacher's objectives? If you can put it in the chat. Yes, Dadon says um, to make learning joyful. Okay, anything else which is a slightly more measurable? Okay. Okay, subject specific objectives. Anything else? Safe space, fun learning, learning by doing. Okay, I think we, we are getting a bit philosophical here. Yeah. <laughs> Anuresha, let's let's yeah. let's see what sure. let's uh, so uh, here are the things that Kamini and I talked of more in uh, more in a classroom context that managing teaching and learning is a is one of the key things that came to our mind and learners academic performances participation in teaching and learning processes and their learning outcomes as as a teacher's main objectives uh, while teaching um, in the classroom and in the school environment. Uh, I think these these objectives I took them from the CBSE. Uh, uh, some place like that, I think. Okay. Uh, there, this is not something we have made, basically. Okay. Hmm. But we, we did agree with all these. And yeah. Yeah. It does make sense. Um, well, let, let's just go a little different direction and let's talk about um, 
how we are uh, teaching in the current scenario. So except for very few schools and teachers here, the country currently is majority working on online and so is teachers. But once the pandemic ends and hopefully soon, broadly speaking, the school management and teachers will have to think and decide what mode of teaching to use, to continue with the online teaching, to go back completely to face-to-face -to -face, or have a blended model of online versus face-to-face. -face. Um, now, one way to decide- One second. So this is the time, wait on this. So this is the time where uh, somebody will have to unmute and let people contribute. So please tell us by unmuting the mic, in your, in your opinion, which teaching model works best, face-to-face -face or online? or a blended model or a hybrid model, which is the mix of the two. So please unmute and tell us. Hello. Yes, Hello. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm Nirmila. Uh, so when we are talking about online teaching, very few students, they can have all the means uh, resources in their home because they are, their parents are struggling now. So uh, very few of them, they are online and most of the students, they are offline. So when class will physically started working, I would be, I would like to focus on uh, blended learning because some of the students, they have now uh, got habitual with this. So they can go for online also. Some of the work they can do, do online on their own, as well as one-to-one face-to-face -to -face teaching is always I would prefer. So uh, definitely blended learning would go. Thank okay. Someone else? Uh, adding to what Ms. Nirmala just said, you know, it also depends on what kind of topic or the curriculum has been taught. If there is a science class and there is some experiment that needs to be done, uh, a blended learning approach would be more feasible wherein a student can come face to face and uh, do the experiment themselves. If it's more theoretical, it can be yeah. conducted through an online course as well. So you're saying there should be some flexibility there and uh, maybe two days of school and three days of working from home, something like that. Is that what you mean? That is correct. Okay. Someone else? Yes, ma'am. Here, uh, Ritu Agarwal. Uh, hmm. I would like to say if the young uh, learners are very young, like uh, uh, me in the current scenario what is going on, like UKG and uh, LKG and first, second, third standards, they need to have face-to-face -face learning. Uh, though I believe in blended learning, but still, uh, according to the age, face-to-face uh, -face is better, maybe the grade-wise. <laughs> then if the, uh, if the learners are matured enough and, you know, like seventh, eighth onwards, they can really uh, go through this online teaching method. Because okay. they can understand, so, yeah. So my question is, the school will do s the same thing for everyone. They won't say, okay, if, uh, young, you know, yeah, grades one to five come to school, uh, grade six to yeah. twelve don't come to school. That will not happen, right? So, so yeah, one more answer. True, so one way it has to be one response. Um, someone else, one last person. Yes, uh, Irshad, go on then. Tell us. I think, uh, you know, blended learning, of course, but hmm. my, uh, the way I envision it is uh, that teachers should, uh, blended learning should take place in the classroom where teachers make a liberal use of uh, the ICT platform, the Android phones, the mobile phones that students have and, uh, you know, add to it the conventional modes of teaching. So, but that is, that is not, that won't be blended learning. That That's would be really faced to face teaching with technology. No, that, yes, that would be integration of ICT in a face to face classroom. So, blended learning model basically works where you bring face to face and online together. Now, when I say face to face, face to face can happen in an online, uh, face to face can happen in a, in a physical classroom or it can happen virtually, just like we are doing it right now. That's face-to-face, -face, but virtual. Where students have access, digital access to online learning. Some things they do in their own time. Some things they do with the teacher. In other words, synchronously in live sessions with the teacher, 
and some things asynchronously without the teacher in their own time. So that's what blended learning is and not just integration of technology. So what we are saying is remote teaching. So when teachers teach these days remotely, they have 30 minute sessions and there is a lot of work which students do in their own time because certainly these days, the kind of time that they had in school about six to seven hours, nobody is sitting on a computer for seven hours today. You know, the, the day has become shorter, especially for lower grades, right? So that's what we mean. And I think, uh, you know, you need to uh, look into what blended learning is. And there's something called a flipped classroom approach as well. So look into that. So when we say blended or mix of the two, we are talking about, yes, coming, coming to school some days, not coming to school some days, but even the days they're not coming to school, they, are, they could still meet the teacher online in a live session. That doesn't mean it's a holiday on the three days they're not coming, but there is a lot of work which they will have to do in their own time asynchronously without the teacher, which ordinarily they would have done with the teacher if we had school like we used to have. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, uh, Anvesha, let's move on. Unmute yourself, uh, Anvesha. Thanks. So to answer this question, the one way to do is the way we discussed it that, uh, uh, you know, let's decide, let's think, I believe we should go this way. I think this is the best way forward. And this model works better than this, because that's what I, my experience, that's what I've learned from my experience. But how can we present our responses based on the evidence, some data, some numbers, rather than our qualitative views? Or opinion. Or opinions. Yeah. So... Again in um, the again in the chat, can you um, think of ways what action you can take to find answer to this question? Which teaching model works best, which we have already discussed, and but what other things that you can do in the classroom beside the discussion that we just had? Just like open discussion that we had. So imagine if your principal called for a meeting and an online meeting and asked you the same question, and if you just said, "I think, I believe, I feel." I think we, we need a little more substance in the discussion for the school to make that decision that going forward, how will this work? So what do you suggest? Imagine we are the school management. We are not, of course, but we are posing to be for two minutes. What will you tell us if the school asked you which teaching model works best? How will your response become more concrete and substantial? You can put in the chat box, please. Okay, so let's, let's, yes. So it's, uh, Stuti says it, if it is based on evidence. So how do we get the evidence? What is the way forward? Where should we get evidence uh, from? What is the first step we should take? Yeah, okay. So now let's first, look at what is the first step we should seek. So first step is we need to establish our research question. In this case, the question is which teaching model works best, face-to-face, -face, online, or a blend? What are our objectives? We need to find out which model serves the purpose better or which model gives makes a difference in the learning outcome. So Dadon, you think blended model works best. This is not based on evidence. This is, this is your opinion. So which model improves learning outcomes? Where do we have more student participation, better attendance, better achievement, face-to-face um, uh, -face participation or any other? And if there are any other objectives you want to include. So first we need to establish what is the problem or what is the question that we need to find an answer to and what could be the objectives of our research if we go forward with it. Now, this is the time um, uh, we are going to collect some data. We want responses from you. 
And uh, Anvesha, let's see if we can count how many said yes and how many said no. We don't know. Okay. Anyway, so <laughs> moving on. <laughs> to do it, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, moving on. Moving on. Um, Anvesha, move on, please. Yeah. So now, if you, are, you are telling us this. Wait, Anvesha. You are telling us um, that this is better or that is better. So I want all of you to put in the chat box three words, one of the three words. You can write F to F for face to face. You can write O for online, not even word, and blended or B. You don't have to give me a reason. You just have to write one of the two. Blended, face to face, or online. Okay, everybody, we have 49 people, so we should get 49 responses. And this should not take long. So I can count up to 15. I'm not sure what Jeshri meant by M. I think it's given mix as the option, face to face online. Ah, okay, 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 possibly. So blend it again. Okay, another 30 seconds to feed in your responses. Another 30 seconds. If anybody wants to put in anything. Okay, fine. So overwhelming majority here says blended is the way forward. Fine. Now, uh, this is our first way of first method of collecting data. We give you three choices and we asked you for which one do you prefer? Let's look at the next one. Anvesha? Yeah. Now, uh, somebody from Firki will have to unmute everyone. And we would like to have an open discussion. So this is not a chat box question. We would like to everybody to be un, you have the possibility of speaking. So please unmute the participants. And one by one, if you can look at the questions that you can see on the screen and give a response. So we've got, please, uh, we kind of know you are saying blended, but please explain what you were telling us in the chat box. So this is the time. And it's open to everyone here. Everybody is speechless. Why is that? Participants, you can unmute yourself and then share. Uh, hello, uh, Nirmala. Yeah. Uh, yes, Nirmala. This is actually, uh, this is uh, 10 months we are conducting online courses. And as I said earlier, that there are very few students uh, available for us to take online classes. And again, uh, when schools are uh, going to reopen and how they are follow going to follow the norms, that is not yet clear. So definitely it is not a regular school. So if it is 50% school students are coming, like every alternate days, if they are coming or half of the class, then surely uh, blended learning would be very useful because uh, whatever we have done so far and students, they are practicing uh, more and more on the same. So I can uh, get, uh, means I can ask them to go for a video that is like a pre-teaching activity. Okay, I okay, okay, understood. So, so what, understood. But the assumption here is uh -huh. that everything is fine. The, the, where we all have a vaccine, we've got vaccinated, everything is fine. And now uh -huh. the school has to make a choice. So it's not about, we don't know how it's not gonna be clear and all that. So let's not worry about that. Yes, even though they are in school, uh, they are in school every day, like a regular school, even though I can give them like projects or activity as in homework, and they can watch it at home. And then next day, we can have a discussion. And sure. So, so blend it. Okay, yes. someone yes. else, please. Someone else. Huh. Someone else. Yeah, I would like to express my views here. This is Lakshmi Sama speaking. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, yes. Go on, Lakshmi. Uh, I feel if it is, if you are not talking about any virus kind of thing here, uh, 
then definitely yeah. i would go for face to face because i don't think anything can replace face to face interaction or classes uh, with the students because okay. that creates a different type type of platform as well as uh, we get to know each other better and also physical activities that we are de- definitely lacking with uh, yeah. can be addressed if you are sure. having face to face thank sure. you sure sure anyone else Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, Amita, oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. The lady first, and the gentleman after. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, mm-hmm. This is Amita here, ma'am. I am working with Kalyani School at Pune. So we have already started the classes for nine to twelfth standard, and uh, last three weeks we are going three times, uh, three days in a week. And uh, those who are not coming uh, to attend physical classes, they are attending uh, v- uh, virtually on virtual platform. So we are connecting with them through. to uh, teams and uh, the other students are sitting in front of us so we are having uh, smart boards and the webcams are installed in the classrooms where we are keeping the social distancing and maintaining all those norms and we are doing it very well both the classes are both the ways we are so, uh, uh, yeah. uh, so the thing is amrita i mentioned yeah. we are not looking into how it is working now with yeah. all the safety protocols in place yeah. the question is Yeah. Please listen to the question. The yeah. question is: After two years, when all this is over and done with, what yeah. then? One word answer: Face to face or blended or on? Definitely, or on. definitely, it will be face to face. Okay, the gentleman. Uh, I think the face to face version would be better suited once this pandemic situation is done and over with, because there can be a lot of. engaging tools and resources that can be employed in the classroom uh, okay. to you know grip the students attention all right one more response please can i go ahead yes please so certainly uh, considering all the scenarios and situations give, uh, you know done with face to face is a better opinion but i would also like to encourage more asynchronous learning for the students where then where we can you know recommend some online courses for them and uh, uh, we mentioned about flipped classroom learning so they can do some online research before coming for the classroom so it they are already aware of the concept and we have to just you know go and to explain the uh, with some practical examples okay all right i think uh, okay anvesha you disappeared you gave me a heart attack <laughs> yeah my internet flickered a bit <laughs> go on okay right so we've um, you know taken input on in two ways one is via the chat box and then then we had a bit of a discussion where you presented your opinion all right you gave your ideas and you justified why you think face to face would work better all right now uh, moving on further we sent out a survey out of that 56 people completed the survey 40 were females 50 male and one preferred not to say and uh, majority of the participants are from coed schools two from boys only and one from a girls only school and 10 participants didn't tell us um and what what came through in that was 41 participants want a hybrid model 14 want face to face and one wants online teaching only and this everybody says that not everybody 35 participants out of 56 say that blended model gives better learning outcomes 12 said face to face gives um uh, uh, sorry what is it So twelve said face to face gives better learning outcomes. Thirty five said blended, and nine said both blended and face to face are more or less the same. And zero said only online. So this is the response we got when we uh, when we collated the data from the survey. So which is such a contradiction because what people said in the survey and what people are saying here. Anyway, um, moving on. to the next slide anvesha yeah so what are the trends we are finding so the trend in the pre session survey was that a blended learning model 
works better. However, in the chat, you people said blended. In an open discussion, most of you preferred face-to-face -face because I think what changed was when you answered the survey and when you answered in the chat, you thought that, you know, in the pandemic situation, maybe. And in the open discussion, it was made clear that when the pandemic is over, but we, we did make that clear right at the beginning as well in the future going forward. Anyway, so there's a bit of a mixed, it's a bit of a mixed bag. And that happens when we collect data by different means and ways. And also I am basing what, basing this information, my analysis of early trends. I haven't spoken to everybody. I have spoken to five people right now. And, and that should not kind of be representative of everybody's uh, response because I don't know because uh, they probably we need to spend a little more time uh, and which we can't do that right now. So point is you can collect information and all this data has to be triangulated. Anvesha help me here with, with this term. What is triangulation? So we, um, we found some information. So for example, in this particular survey, um, we found uh, through the survey result that people preferred blended learning. And we triangulated this information how, when we had an open discussion, most of you again said blended. So when we had open discussion, if we- No, that's when people said face-to-face. -face. In the chat, people said blended. In the chat, people said blended. So we kind of verified the information that we had collected through different means of collecting this information as well. So you get one trend, but you, you need to make sure that what the information that you have collected is verified information. That it's making sense that everybody is talking, this, asking or answering the, the same, giving the same answer. That's when you triangulate your information. So point being, you cannot just rely on one tool to give you information. You have to use three, four, five tools so that you are sure that you have captured everybody's response and which direction is it pointing into, which is where the evidence lies, if I may put it like that. Yeah, so this is what we feel when we look at different data we've collected via chat, poll, not a chat poll, but via the chat, the discussion, the survey. So these are three different ways of collecting data. Moving on. So, okay. if, I may, if I may just come in here, because we're going to have a very interesting set of discussions on uh, what do we go forward, but kind of summarizing what we have discussed so far is, uh, so we are working around these broad questions that what will you now do with the findings? who will be using this information, why you need to do this, and what you will get from this information, and by when you would need it, and who and how will you collecting your information. So you are the broad five questions that we have touched upon so far. And going forward, the information that we gather, what will you do, how will you present it? Um, before we go ahead, um, we thought we'll share some ways of presenting this information. So one way of doing it is the way which commonly uh, showed that you can put your all the information line by line. The other way is through doing a more graphical presentation of your data and building a story around it as you analyze it. So I have this, so the questionnaire, uh, thanks to those who have answered the pre-session um, pre, um, uh, survey, based on the, that, we have analyzed information and broadly talking about uh, the findings here. I will not get into each, each of the questions, but just highlight some of the things here. The questionnaire was divided into two parts. If you notice, they were part of qualitative questions and some are quantitative questions. So quantitative are where we, don't, we have numbers that we are showing on the screen and qualitative are the open-end objective questions. So one way is to put the uh, pie chart of gender as 71% of the respondent were female, 27% were male, and two preferred not to say. And um, 
and they came from most of the majority of them were from co education schools. 3% were from boys' schools, and 18% of the respondents were not associated with the school. The right hand side, what you prefer, the way we presented is called as donut, um, where 73% preferred hybrid model over face to face or online. There, there are different ways of presenting this data. And another way which I thought would be interesting, I'll show you here is when we asked which model you preferred, we sliced it down further based on the school where you are working. So on the left hand side, you see public school, private school, aided school, and I'm not associated with the school. And the bar here, the pink says hybrid model, the red is face to face and orange is online. So you would notice that public school, 50 there are 50, 50 people who preferred uh, hybrid to face to face. Private school majority preferred hybrid model. Aided school also preferred hybrid model. Now the catch here is it's not a representative data. It's not that I can say with confidence because it's not it's not representing all the population here. We have we have done a what we call a dipstick that only fifty six people responded, which is fifty percent of almost or almost you know kind of people who, who participate in this workshop, in these sessions, but not representing the entire population of the teachers that we are we have in India. Going further, I thought I'll just show another way of doing this is through histograms, where uh, we ask this question, which model according to you achieves better learning outcomes? And 35 people, here I put numbers instead of percentages, it's based on the how you're building your story. 35 people preferred blended model over face-to-face uh, uh, -face or, or online. Nobody, nobody said uh, online as the best model for achieving learning outcomes. 12 said face-to-face -face and um, nine said both face-to-face -face and blended model have achieved better learning outcomes. So this is one of the ways of presenting your quantitative data, the numbers data. The two questions of qualitative data uh, were why you prefer uh, the selected model of teaching and if you have any other comments. So what uh, I did was uh, I sliced the data uh, in two parts. One was those who preferred online. Uh, so online was just one, one who preferred face-to-face -face and one who preferred blended. So, so qualitative questions are are relatively easier to ask and administer, but can be very tricky to analyze because you have to read through every question, think of themes, decide what are people trying to say, what does majority think. So here for this, I first read all the answers, all the 56 responses of why you prefer this, and I I'm created majority themes where it's coming from. Then I, again, further subgroup them into different categories. And this is, I made a small graph out of this to say what people are broadly thinking. So those who preferred face-to-face, -face, around 14 people who preferred face-to-face, -face, on the left-hand side are the reasons why they preferred face-to-face. -face. So we can say they were like listing on the benefits of face-to-face. -face. And on the blended, the 41 piece number who preferred blended, why they preferred blended as a, as a better mode of teaching. Um, the other way of presenting is through um, word clouds. Word clouds look something like this. So any other, like the last question, which was again open-ended, if you have any other question, any other comments to say, I put those words in a, in a word cloud format and this is how it looks like. That these are the, what are the key words that came out uh, when you talked about your comments? So, so the words that are said many times are bigger, bigger. in the word cloud, yeah. They are pretty easy to do. They look very nice and fancy in your reports and, and throw out the big words that are that are coming out from... Or the themes. Basically, they are the themes. Themes, right. That, that people are touching on. And they are it's a easily, you know, freely available platforms online. You can go and use, make, create your own word clouds in different shapes and sizes. And on the right is, I picked up one of the quotes from one of the teachers who responded here, which I really liked. And they can be used as an evidence for triangulation and validation of the findings, that why people say such and such things. Okay. Now, uh, shall I go on on this, um, Kamini? Yeah, to... yeah, 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 go, go on, go on. So I just thought, let's just summarize the things that we have done so far. 
So we have various qualitative and quantitative tools that can be used. For instance, we the, we have used three so far. It was a pre-session survey that most of you, around 56 of you filled up. Uh, there were polls that we carried out just now, which Kami did, and open the chat, discussion. In the chat, the yeah. poll means the chat. This or that, yeah. choose one. Yeah. There you type F or O or B. And then there are open discussions that also we had when some of you uh, unmuted yourself and talked about your uh, what, what you think. Now, beyond this, there are some other tools that can be used, which are called focus group discussion, interviews with selected participants, feedback form, which we'll share with you at the end of this session. No, that one sec, that feedback form will be for the session, but feedback meaning when you implement a change or a model, then after that, you take feedback on how it, if it worked or not, that is further evidence to uh, what data you already have and if you are on the right track or not. Yeah. Thanks, Anvia. So yeah. I've thrown some big terms here. Um, and I thought I'll just, you know, take a bit of time and walk you through some of these tools and what are the broad benefits and challenges of using these tools. Um, if you a little bit of information there, uh, sorry, on the on this particular slide. But the easiest tool here generally is to have open discussion. Quick to set. For instance, asking the entire class of students their views on a particular topic. One can get variety of responses, but the challenge is only voice, only loud voices in the group are heard. And there's a greater chance of it becoming a chaos, which I'm sure most of you know how to, how to manage that. Now, focus group discussions are, uh, on the other hand, they help design the research a little better. They refine the research question and approach when you select you know, some, some people and bring them in a, in a close setup and have an open discussion with them. The participants selected can be very carefully selected to represent different groups. But again, one needs to be cautious of loud voices that dominate the discussion. A good moderation is required generally for focus group discussion, which can also become as a challenge. Uh, and generally for very sensitive topics, you avoid open discussion or focus group discussions. For that, a personal interview is a much better, to, better tool to use. Um, uh, personal interviews are generally when you do face-to-face -face interaction with your respondent. It's flexible. You can ask your question, modify your question the way you want. It can, it's, it's called a structured or unstructured or open-ended. I will not get into details of that. They can, the interview can probe for specific answers and can repeat or clarify the questions if the respondent is not able to understand or misunderstand the particular question. Another, a good usefulness of FGD focus group discussion or the personal interview is that interview is personally present to observe the non-verbal behavior of the, of the respondent, which is also very interesting to observe at times that how do they react or hesitate to a particular question. And it also validates your answers as well, that if they are, um, if they are, uh, uh, you know, if they are honestly giving you an answer or they are uh, trying to give you an answer that you, they, you want to hear. Uh, and then the other are pools and polls and survey that we just talked about. If the sample, if your respondent needs to be large, then a poll or survey is better. Then you can reach out to a large number of people in a very short time. And it can be of different form. For instance, um, uh, the pre-session survey is one of the survey forms. And uh, polls and survey are, however, a little different. Polls are generally around one question or you know, quickly two questions. Survey can be longer. You can ask multiple questions in a survey. But of course, according to your uh, uh, requirement, the data points you want to reach out to, the sample that you want to reach out to, you decide on your tools. For to summarize as you want to do a larger number of people, you use survey. If you have quick questions, you do polls. If you have lots of questions, you do surveys. If you want to get very important information, you get you do personal interviews. If you want to get a sense of what your data is talking about, how should I go forward? What should be my broad idea? Then open discussion or focus group are the better tools to use. Okay. Anvisha, let's move on. Yeah. So, so the question now is, can these tools be used 
to collect evidence from your students. So if you asked your students, which, so all of you had varied views, blended face-to-face -face, online. What about if you ask the same questions from your students? I'm sure they will have different responses and you might just be surprised what, what they have to say. So as Anvesha said, depending on the requirement, depending on how many people you want to reach at one time, you want to assess quickly, take the temperature, use a poll. If you want more detailed responses, maybe a personal interview, things like that. So survey, poll, open discussion, focus group interviews, and of course, a feedback form. So all these tools can be used to collect evidence from the students. Do you agree with us? Can you use these with, with your students? Can these tools be used with your students? Yes, let's, no, if you can tell us let's use our in chat the chat room. Room. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's go to the next slide, Anvesha. So how does action research work? Um, what is um, action research? So it is basically investigating how things are going, how teaching and learning is going and investigating your teaching and learning to improve your own and students' learning. That's what we want to find out. So the tiff between face-to-face -face and remote teaching is which serves, which where, you know, which gives better outcomes? Where do the students learn more? Which ratio of what blend works best or if one or the other works best? So we want to find that out. Why should we um, do that? So we should do that because it helps us notice what they and what you and your students are doing rather than what you think is actually happening. Again, because it will present evidence. It's to get feedback, assess if it's a success or a failure. You can respond to your learners' needs and uh, emerging needs and adapt to your teaching. You can justify why you are doing what you are doing. You can, of course, improve your knowledge and you make an informed choice or you make an informed decision. It's not, I think, I believe. I have the data to support why I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay, go on then. And how you should go about it, you need to plan, which means you identify the problem. You investigate the problem, you gather evidence, you observe the data, I mean, you observe or analyze the data, you implement the solution, you plan and make the change. And then of course, again, take feedback as we've been saying to find out if you made the right move or not. Okay. I, I just want to say that it's always advisable to make a concept note or research note to get as much clarity as what you want to do, how you want to do, why you want to do. In, you in plan your planning more. stage. In your planning, in your planning, in your stage. planning stage. Yeah. So yeah. There yeah. itself, you are clear as why you are doing it. How will you do it? How will you share the information? How will you present the information? How will you utilize this information? Okay. Um, next one. So is there a problem you would like to explore? Any ideas except for this? Do you have any thoughts that, okay, this is something I'd like to find out if this works or not? Any suggestions? Okay, maybe have a think about it after the session and might just give you a, maybe you need a little more time. So some benefits of action research are that you have the ability to reflect. It improves your, Anvisha, you have to, yeah, you have the ability to reflect. It contributes to professional development. It also improves your problem solving skills, your confidence. You have uh, evidence-based decisions. It is also, you don't work alone on these things. So it's a collaborative learning opportunity and you become more open to change. You are, uh, you know, a little more flexible to new ideas if you del delve into action research. The nature of this research is that it is very, very participatory, which means it's in your hands. A third party is not doing it for you. You know your context the best and you make those decisions as in how you should go about it. The next slide has some references here. I just want to say, um, if I, uh, sorry, uh, Kamini here that um, usually the action research, if you if you Google search, you usually around students, but you can easily use it to investigate 
effectiveness of teaching or the, the, the example that we used. So yeah, sure. if you, there are loads of tools available, ways available on, you can just pick them up from online and try and work through them. Okay, so right. So the next uh, slide is some references. This slide will be on the Firki portal. You will be able to access it uh, once they put it there. And now we open the floor for any questions um, that you might have. Thank you so much for that. Um, dear participants, if you have any questions, please type in the chat box. We have a couple of minutes to answer them. Uh, actually, we have two questions from YouTube chat. Um, so yeah, one question is, how big should be an ideal sample for the research and what should be kept in mind while framing questions to elicit the required information? And Vaisha, do you want to answer? Yes. Um, so uh, sample size is always a tricky and selecting your sample is also also one of the key things in a research. Um, I cannot give a straightaway answer as what should be your sample size. It actually depends on your population, the universe you're talking about. And there are different ways of calculating your sample size. So uh, maybe another session to how to do calculation on sample size. Um, your second question was around questions. So, um, so the key when you are designing a question, most importantly think how it relates to your objective and what, how will you utilize the answer that will come from it. When we write question, our tendency is to just go on asking questions and it runs into pages and pages. But it's very important to pick your questions carefully and only ask the relevant questions that are relevant to your objective. Yeah, and because always, typically what happens is, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Can so complete I was I would, I normally suggest that when you design your question, as a good practice, administer it yourself as a respondent or run a pilot with few people to see if they're making sense or not and what kind of answer and, you are getting. Yes, and if the answer ans the answers respond to your object, uh, correspond to your objectives or not, one. And sometimes we have, as, as teachers, have a tendency to collect a lot of data, but we don't know then what to do with it. That also happens. So that's another thing to consider. Any other questions? Yeah, we have one, one more question. I'm just sending also in the chat box. How to go about selecting a subject for AR and what if somebody is already through with the same AR focus? Uh, should that be a much matter of concern? So we'll close out with this question. So I think uh, I wouldn't advise you to do research all by yourself. If you work in a school, I think maybe a group of teachers, you know, if there is a plan that, okay, something is changing or we don't know how this is going to work. Let's, let's take a, uh, uh, um, you know, let's find out before we venture into using a particular model or if the school is spending money on maybe a new software. So for example, if the team wants to use teams, if, they, if your school wants to use teams, to do online lessons and or if they want to use zoom or google meet for your online lessons which of the three platforms are better so now you'll have to look at it from a safety and security the features the affordances does it give us a grade book where we can collate all their assessments whatever so all of these platforms offer different functionalities so if i want to do research on the three platforms i need to maybe use it when you say sample size, maybe give a flavor of these three platforms to one class and then ask them, what do you think? And that data will help you. And it is for Zoom, but grade 12 students maybe prefer teams. We don't know that. So again, so that's your sample. That's your problem. Now, how big your sample should be you decide because you know your context the best and also what is doable. You can't reach out to the whole school at the first time, at the start. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I think it's 4.30 already. Uh, thank you so much, both Anvesha and Kamini for being here for this amazing session. Uh, so now I request both of you to share your thoughts on this webinar today, any specific thoughts or feedback. Um, so I would say thank you, first of all, for everybody who participated via chat in the pre-session survey or you unmuted yourself and shared your thoughts. 
I would have loved to have a longer session. I would have had loved to have more time for an open discussion where we could have then, you know, safely said or with confidence said, yet yeah, this is what the whole group wants. At the moment, we were only giving you a flavor of how you can do things. So that those are my thoughts. I wish there was more time where we could have analyzed this a, a little more and more in depth. That's what I would say. Yeah, I echo uh, Kamini's uh, thoughts completely. I, I really enjoyed uh, working on this. It was, um, uh, I, it was a very, it was a good learning experience for my, myself as well. And um, uh, maybe, you know, next time more participatory, more in terms of like even designing a hands-on work, if, if it was a longer session. Um, um, but, but thank you so much. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you for giving us chance to share our thoughts on this. Thank you so much. And thank you to British Council too for being a valuable partner in designing a first learning path, teaching in action, and creating a quality blended learning space for teachers and teacher educators. I also would really like to thank all our audience here today for attending this learning path. Uh, we hope you found value in attending this uh, synchronous spaces and doing the asynchronous work. We would also really like to hear from you on the feedback. So we have sent you a feedback form in the chat box. But please keep sharing your thoughts on this so that we can make our process and even the going forward the webinars better. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, to reach out to a speaker after the webinar, write to us at teachenglish.india at britishcouncil.org or follow them on Twitter uh, at inBritish or Facebook English India in India. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you. Bye, Ali. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.